If you know anything about cyclocross, I'm sure you will know that from time to time, in a race, you will need to get off your bike, pick it up, and run. Emma, what are you wearing? Well, it's all this, like this jumping on and off the bike thing. I, it's making me nervous, it just looks a bit dangerous, so I thought I'd come protected. Susie, you will be absolutely fine. Although, I'm not entirely sure that if you did have any issues that you've necessarily protected quite the right places. But anyway, in this video, Emma is going to learn how to get off a moving bike, pick it up, run with it, and then jump back on. Cyclocross is all about momentum. It's hard won, and so you need to try and conserve it as much as possible. And the very nature of riding off-road means that there are going to be times when you are either quicker to get off and run, or you simply can't ride the bike at all. So whilst we're thinking about momentum, the trick is to actually get off the bike before you start to slow down, i.e. dismount a moving bike. And then similarly, when you finish running, you can get back on the bike, you do that moving as well. So again, you can serve that hard won momentum. You should be absolutely fine, Emma, because you have, of course, your background in triathlon and duathlon. Yeah, well, you say that, but actually in duathlon, for example, like, I was fine at running and fine at riding, but the getting on and off the bike bit, I sucked at it. I mean, Basically, I like to approach my bike like one might approach a skittish horse, like slowly and carefully and with respect. I mean, not just kind of leap onto it willy-nilly. I mean, it just looks painful, to be honest. Well, firstly, your bike will appreciate that approach, but no, it's not painful because there's actually a really clear, precise technique. And so once you learn that and you get your head around it, you'll find that there isn't really all that much risk of any kind of injury at all. Where you practice is important. So we are on this really nice soft forest path. Grass would do well as well. Nice and flat, so you don't have to worry about picking up too much speed. This is going to be the place, Emma, where you totally nail getting on and off a bike. So we need to approach the obstacle at less than our fast running pace, so a comfortable running pace, because obviously, otherwise, you hit the ground too fast. Exactly. That sounds bad. But for learning, we can go slower than that. You just want to be slightly above walking pace because then you've got a bit more stability on the bike. You feel a bit more comfortable. Then what we need to do is put our left pedal in the six o'clock position. Now, most people will get off the bike on the left hand side. It's a good idea simply because the drivetrain is on the other side. So there's less to get caught up in when you're running. And also when you pick up the bike, you don't have that resting against your back. Makes so sense. with our weight on our left leg, yep. the pedal at six o'clock, we're then gonna need to unclip our right foot okay. and swing the right leg round the back. That's why okay? I start getting worried, but yeah. Well, no, don't, because you'll be okay. Hands on the brake hoods. If they're on the drops, you'll probably find you're a little bit too low down. On the hoods, you can kind of be nice and upright and controlled. On the tops, you've obviously got no brakes anywhere near you, so you have no way of adjusting your speed to running pace. But you can be quite stable because you've also got the saddle resting against your right thigh there. The next step is you take your right hand off the lever and you grab hold of the top tube. It keeps the bike under nice control. Right. And it also means that when we get off, we can just pick it straight up. Yes. So it's definitely quicker. You can actually put quite a bit of weight through that right hand. Okay. So you're not just resting it all on your arms and your foot. You can unweight that foot. Mm -hmm. Then, you ready? Mm -hmm. You click out and you start running. Give it a go. What could possibly go wrong? Nothing could go wrong. Come on then, Emma. Looking good, looking good. Is this Sorry. too fast? No, perfect, perfect. That's it. Oh, I didn't do the hand. Well, no, that was a good start. That was I also slow down. Start. Probably don't need to slow down. That's kind of not the point, isn't it? You, d you did start to slow down at the end there, but I thought you were going to crash into me, so I was quite pleased <laughs> in a way. Um, I think it's just a case of practicing when you get a bit more comfortable in that position of like being on one foot. It wasn't that bad. I mean, I didn't, I didn't die. So I mean, no, no, absolutely yeah. not. Don't worry, I won't crash into you because you look like the least comfy place to land, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm quite pointy. Right. Gonna try again. I have confidence now. I didn't. Almost. Almost did it. Okay, nice. Looking good. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> yeah, that was kind of closer than <laughs> closer to nature than I wanted to get. What went wrong there? Balance. I, th I think you just, yeah, I think you just lost your balance a little bit. Remember, you can still steer to keep your balance. So I think at this point, you just, I think you panicked a little bit. Yes. Because you knew you couldn't get that right foot down. And then you sort yeah. of, and then you went. Whereas actually, 
if you'd steered instead yeah. of leaning. Would it be helpful to just practice scooting with a bike? Yeah. So like, so what I mean is, you know, literally like you got your foot on the pedal and you kind of start, because then you can kind of, you can kind of steer a little bit. Nice. Having your hand on the top tube, it's probably, it's fair to say, the next step on. So right, yeah. it's, it's a fairly quick maneuver for you then to take one hand off the bars and pick up the top yeah. tube. Keep I, your hands on the bars, I reckon. Yeah, I think hands on bars is me. I just don't feel like I've got the balance to do one hand and one foot while that hand is transitioning from here to there. I just don't, I think it's beyond my balance capability. You will definitely be able to get it but it probably is something that you need to practice. So, so no, it's fine. In the short term, it's not a problem at all. Yeah, both hands on the bars is totally cool. So let's, let's skip the top tube bit. The next point, I'm gonna bring our obstacle back in front of us because we obviously need to get off for something. So we'll talk timing now, okay? You basically want to be on your bike as much as possible because it's basically more energy efficient to be freewheeling than it is to be running, which means getting off as close to the obstacle as you feel comfortable. So when you watch the pros do it, they leave it really late. I'd give yourself a little bit of grace period, particularly because you're holding the handlebars. Yep. And so you're gonna need obviously to then take that hand, put it on the top tube and then pick up the bike. Ooh, almost. <laughs> oh, I braked. And I didn't, oh. Good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really? More like a hippo. <laughs> Presumably if you leave it too late and you're still dismounting when you encounter the obstacle, that is not optimal. No, no, it's fair to say that would be suboptimal. In most instances, you will probably be off the bike for maybe five meters or so, in which case you pick it up by the top tube and then run. You never want to push a cross bike, ideally. If you're going for any longer and you're running up a hill, for example, then you want to think about putting on your shoulder. My frame's a lot bigger than yours, so I can actually lift it quite easily. That looks neat. It, yeah, because it's quite a, quite a spacious frame. Mm -hmm. so, so the actual getting it on your shoulder might require a right. modification of the technique, but you can always tell a cross rider by the way they hold their bike, because rather than leaving it like this with the saddle and your helmet and the front wheel near the floor and running around like that, you have it much more neatly. That does look neat, yeah. yeah. Now you're looking good. So you've got your, your hand around the, the head tube. That's really good because it keeps the, keeps the bike nice and firmly up there at the front. It keeps your back wheel way off the ground. And also when you're in a race and you've got rivals, you can now control the back of the bike oh. and you can actually hit them in the face or block them. Sneaky. <laughs> yeah, no, don't do that. <laughs> nice. You have very nearly graduated from jumping on and off school for mm -hmm. cyclocross. You've totally nailed it so far. This one probably, if you'll pardon the pun, is the biggest hurdle. The first thing to talk about is the fact that we're not trying to do the high jump here. We're not trying to set any records for altitude. That's good, because I'm rubbish at high jump. <laughs> okay, well you <laughs> only have to jump as high as you need to jump. And then the second thing really, is that actually the process is in fact less about jumping and more about speeding up the process that you do every time you get on your bike. So swinging your leg over and just jumping in the saddle. That's all you're doing. You're just doing it at speed, okay? okay. So no, no jumping, that's when there's a recipe for disaster. We simply are looking to learn that technique whilst on the move. So hopefully that sort of reduces the fear factor a little bit. The reason it worries me is because I feel like my saddle is quite high compared to my leg length. So I feel like if I don't jump high enough, that is gonna be worse than jumping too high. And see, when I get on a bike, I don't normally I, I normally do pedals first because I can't quite sit on the saddle. No, but then but that's where the little kind of hop comes in. Right. And then you just go, oh yeah. And a bit of coordination, I guess. Yeah, it's like... Oh dear. No, you'll be fine. Okay, you right. ready? Yeah, you, you show me how. Okay, right, first of all, start up front. We hold the handlebars either on the hoods or the tops. Mm -hmm. We learned last year that Sven Nace has one hand on a brake and one hand on the top. So you could do it like Lovely him and he's the greatest of all time. Mm. Then, this is the bit that I think a lot of people don't necessarily learn, is you push the bike forward. Because that means that your, your leg, your right leg doesn't have to come as far because it's only traveling over the back wheel. You probably push it even further in front of you. Maybe not quite that far, <laughs> <laughs> like that. And then, and we can do this from stationary, we're looking to jump just high enough 
so that we land on like your inner thigh basically. So don't la try and land on your bum or right. worse. You want to land on your thigh and then your momentum, because you're kind of jumping across the bike as well as forward, is going to carry you nicely into the saddle. So maybe try on the tops so you're, you're having to reach less far. Oh, I, I never ride on the tops though. No, but you don't have to ride, you just have to get oh, okay. on and then yeah. it's immediately you can be back like that. Okay. And, and we don't even have to be running to start with. You push the bike forward in front of you and then kind of jump after it. Right. Okay. Ah. <laughs> Think of it more in terms of one diagonal motion Ooh. as opposed to two separate yeah, motions. The two vectors combining, right. Hey, there we go. That was cool. Now, all it is a case of is just adding a little bit more velocity. So to start with, maybe kind of leaping forward with a bit more gusto. And gusto! Ah. <laughs> I don't think it's reasonable to expect anyone to learn it in an hour or two hours or an afternoon. But by practicing those basic principles over and over again, then you'll totally nail it. You've got the technique, it's just a case of you kind of practice it. Like, you know, even the top cross riders will be practicing, you know, these All the techniques. Time, yeah. yeah, you know, like just out on the bikes, in training, in the woods, they'll be practicing getting on and off. So you're saying I have to practice? I think so. And then we'll probably discover that like just about every other form of cycling, you'll totally nail it. You become national champ and then the rest is history. I'm a bit tired. It's been a long <laughs> afternoon of falling off. <laughs> if you want to see the beginner skills, which uh, Emma mastered previous video, then you can get through to that one just down there. And otherwise, please give this one a big thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe by clicking down here.